In the previous tutorial, you created an Eclipse project. We called it Messenger. We ran it on Tomcat. A page showed up. You clicked on a link and uh, this was the link. And you got a response saying, got it. What did you get? Why did you get it? And I said, we should celebrate. What are we celebrating? So we'll try and understand what's happening behind the scenes here. So I told you that this is actually a URL for a REST API request. And what you see here is a REST API response. So there are a few things you need to know about this request response. So I'm gonna tell you what they are. Uh, just go with it for now. You'll have to trust me when I say these things, but I'll soon show you what each of these components actually are. So the first part should be simple, right? So this is localhost colon 8080. So this is Tomcat running on your machine. So whatever you deploy to the Tomcat, the URL has to start with HTTP localhost 8080. Simple so far. Now Messenger here is the application context. You see here, this project is called Messenger. So when you deploy this project on Tomcat, it'll be accessible in the Tomcat URL, localhost 8080 slash the application context, which is Messenger, right? So this is the URL to access this application. So this way, this is no different from any web application, right? This is how you would normally access it. The question is with this part of the URL. You see here, there's a web API slash my resource. So what's happening over here? So what's happening is this application is configured to accept REST API requests at this slash web API URL, right? So any REST API request that you make to this application, it has been pre-configured to go to this slash web API slash onwards, right? So this is the only way you can access these REST APIs that are a part of this project. Why is it configured that way? Well, that's what the creators of the archetype has chosen, right? So you didn't create this project, right? You just copied it from a template that we downloaded. So this template has been configured to use slash web API in the URL for all REST APIs. I'll show you where that's configured in a bit, but just go with me here. The next part of the URL is my resource. So this is actually a resource. You know what a resource is in REST API, right? So you have messages as a resource, you have comments as a resource. So there is a dummy resource that's been created in this project called my resource. And when you access this URL, you're doing a get request to this resource URL, you get a piece of text called got it, right? So this is inbuilt functionality in this project. I'm gonna explain how all these pieces fit together and what is actually causing this inbuilt functionality to work, but it's important that you know what's happening, right? So you're basically making a call to a resource URL. The resource name is my resource, right? You're making a get request to this and you're getting a text as the response. Okay, so with that said, now, how is this all working? Now, let's go back to this page, right? So this is the root page. When we started this application, this is what showed up. Now, where is this coming from? Let's expand source main web app. Now we see here there is a page called index.jsp, right? So this is like the starter page that this project has. If we double click on it, well, there you go. This is what we saw on that, on this page. So this page should make sense. It's index.jsp, and this is what servlet applications normally do. They just load index.jsp when the, when, when the root context is loaded. So this is what is happening. Now what's happening when you click on Jersey resource, right? So when this URL is accessed, what is happening? Now think about how these servlet applications work for a bit. Now, any web application, right? So they're all built using the standard Java servlet technology. Even if you're building like a Spring MVC application or a Starts application, they all have servlets or filters, right? Those are the only two ways you can handle requests in your web application. So it leads us to believe that this project has some kind of a servlet that does the bootstrap, right? There's some kind of a servlet that's handling this request. Now, what servlet is that? 
Well, to find out what servlets are configured, what you need to do is open web.xml. So let's open up webinf. There you go, web.xml. Let's open that up and click on the source tab. We see here there is one servlet configured. There is a servlet called Jersey Web Application. And the servlet classes are Glassfish Jersey Servlet, Servlet Container. So this is like a class which comes bundled with the Jersey jars. And uh, there is an init param, let's not worry about that for now, but basically this servlet is mapped to this URL pattern, slash web API slash star. So any request that comes to this application that has slash web API in the front, hey servlet, handle that URL, right? So that's what this web, web.xml is saying. So it's basically mapping our Jersey servlet to slash web API slash star. So that should explain this web API part of it. Okay. So this part is standard in any JaxRS application. You would have something similar to this. What happens after this is the code that you write, right? So this is something that we're going to do uh, in the next tutorial. We're going to write our own resource handling classes. But this part is going to be common, right? It's more, the concepts are more or less the same. So what have we learned so far? In summary, our REST API application is a standard web application, right? It's a standard servlet application. It has the jars for Jersey within it in the class path, right? That's the first thing. The next thing is in the web.xml, there is one servlet which is pointing to the servlet container class in Jersey. And this servlet, whatever this name is, should be mapped to some URL pattern which handles all the REST APIs, right? So in this example, it happens to be web API slash star. So any request which has that URL pattern will be handled by the Jersey servlet. And what the Jersey servlet does is basically look at your code, your classes, to find out what to do from then on. So I hope this makes sense. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're gonna look at what's actually doing the handling of this my resource. See you in the next tutorial and thanks for watching.